Hi there, my name is Cindy Baldwin, and I'm an author of books for middle grade readers. My first book is called Where the Watermelons Grow, and my second book is called Beginner's Welcome. Beginner's Welcome is about an 11-year-old girl named Annie Lee, who's coping with the unexpected loss of her father and the fact that his spirit is still stored of haunting their apartment. She and her mom don't really know how to move on, and Annie Lee decides that staying invisible is the easiest way to make sure that nobody ever hurts her again. But when she meets an elderly man who plays piano beautifully at a local mall, she is determined to learn the same kind of magic he can do with his music, and hopes that maybe through that it might give her the courage to move on and create a new life, even after loss. I'm going to read the first chapter of Beginner's Welcome now. I woke on the first day of sixth grade to the sound of Mama crying in the bathroom. Before my eyes were all the way open, I was reaching over to my nightstand to grab the two-headed quarter that sat there, cool to the touch, even on this warm, late August morning, the kind of morning where summer had its claws so deep into everything it felt like it might never let go. Those two faces of George Washington were twice as shiny as a regular coin from rubbing, first Daddy's big fingers and then my smaller ones. He'd carried that magic show quarter around in his pocket as long as I could remember. It always pays to carry your own luck, Al, he'd say whenever he showed it to me, flipping it from heads on one side to heads on the other. You never know when it might come in handy. Annie Lee? Mama's voice was tight and stretched, but at least she wasn't sniffling anymore. Mama had cried every single morning for more than two and a half months. I'd hardly cried at all. Sometimes it felt like Mama had sucked up all the space for grieving in our family, so there wasn't any left for me. A minute later, Mama knocked on my bedroom door. You awake in there? Yeah, I said and closed my fingers around the quarter. By the time I was dressed, the two-headed coin in the pocket of my denim shorts where it belonged, Mama had scrubbed all the tears off her pale face and turned the fan on loud in the bathroom so that there was only the tiniest hint of Daddy's aftershave in the air. She'd washed the sink out, too, so I couldn't see the foam and stubble that appeared there every morning like clockwork. You excited to start your new school? Mama asked while I dragged a hairbrush through my hair. Every year I was alive, my hair moved further away from yellow and closer to that not really a color that happens to blonde hair when it gets bored. I shook my head. Do you have your key to get in here after school is over? It's in my backpack already. Good. And you remember which bus number you're on? I'm almost 12, Mama. Mama sighed. I just hate knowing that I won't be here when you're home from school. I don't like thinking about the things that could. Never mind. I'm sure you'll be fine. Every day for the last six weeks, I had been treated to her worries about leaving me alone. A latchkey kid, she'd said the day she'd gone full time at the housekeeping company. I'm sorry, Annie Lee. I never wanted you to have to fend for yourself like this. I wish there was any other choice. Now Mama sighed again, something she did almost as much as crying these days. Sometimes I thought maybe it was just the way she breathed now, like the world was pressing too hard on her shoulders and she could never get a deep enough breath. I'm going to go figure out some breakfast. She scooted past me out the bathroom door and was gone before I could blink, just like she'd never been there at all. When I came into the kitchen, she was crying again. Not the regular, sniffly tears that appeared every morning when she got up and found the bathroom smelling so strongly of daddy he could have left it only seconds before. These were big, shocked sobs that shook her whole body. She was standing with one hand over her mouth, her skin white, staring at the kitchen table. It was a little table, the only size that would fit into the little kitchen of our little apartment. And it was so old and dinged up, you couldn't even tell what color the stain had been in its old life before Mama and I had found it during the Independence Day sale at the Goodwill. And on top of it, smelling like sugar and memories, there was a box of old-fashioned donuts from the whole shebang. My daddy had been dead for 83 days, and still, somehow, there was a box of the exact same donuts he'd brought home on the first day of every new school year since I started kindergarten, sitting right there on our kitchen table.